Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Scoper. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to uh, share some of my experience with uh, cataract surgery and multifocals. Uh, and I, I tell you, I've been doing cataract surgery for about 20 years or, or so. Um, and here at Virginia Eye Consultants, we do about 4,500 cataracts a year. I do about half of those, about 2,000. So we have an opportunity to have a lot of experience. And I've been involved in multifocals since I guess 2005 when some of the first multifocals uh, came out. Um, and I have to say when the Restore 2.5 was launched about a year and a half uh, ago, I really thought it was just going to be another low ad multifocal. But uh, I was so pleasantly surprised about the distance vision my patients got. And, and I learned that it really is true. It's not just another multifocal. It, it really is. It's really been a game changer for my practice. It's completely changed the way that I take care of my patients with multifocals and how I recommend multifocals to my patients. What patient characteristics lead you to conclude whether or not a patient is an appropriate candidate for active focus? So we, we and that's a, a very important question, but we look at it from two different uh, angles or two different uh, tracks. Before I even see the patient, all the, the testing has been done. And so I've got a list of things that I look at right in front of the patient before I make a, a recommendation. It's, it's, the, it's the testing in my clinical exam. I look at their refractive error. I look at how much astigmatism they have. Can I take care of that astigmatism with my femtosecond lens X uh, laser? I look at higher order aberrations, and I really feel that that has been something that's been helpful over the years, especially coma. I look at the uh, ankle uh, kappa, and then on my clinical exam, I put fluorescein in every patient's eye, and I look at their tear surf. I look at their uh, their corneal surface and their tear film to make sure that we don't have a big problem with ocular surface disease and then I look at everybody's macula to make sure it looks pristine and I get a macular OCT on all of these patients who are interested in a multifocal or a, an active focus uh, IO, uh, IOL. Um, if all of those things look good, that's when I make the recommendation to the patient and I may say something like, not everybody is a good candidate for a multifocal, but you are and let me tell you why. Now, that patient has already been counseled uh, before I even see the patient, okay? So they've already heard about multifocals and astigmatism and toric IOLs and lens X lasers. They already know all of those things. So they're ready for the doctor to make a recommendation. So they're like sitting on the edge of their chair waiting to see what they're a good candidate for and what I recommend. So when I tell them they're a good candidate for a multifocal, they're expecting me to make a recommendation. And in regards to a patient's lifestyle, what kind of activity levels do you look for? So I look for patients who are really busy patients. They're, uh, you know, they're out on the golf course, uh, they're doing sports, they're riding their, their bikes, they, they've got a very active, uh, they've got a very active uh, lifestyle, lifestyle. And I I, I tell them that we can just offer them so much more now than we could even just a, a, a few years before. So, so most of these patients have been giving this opportunity with the counselors and the counselors have written me a little note saying this is a very active patient they, and these are their hobbies and I say I see you enjoy playing uh, tennis or playing golf or riding your bike. So I already know those things to bring those up when I'm talking to the patients. And the patients kind of like that their surgeon knows a little bit about who they are and what they enjoy doing. It sounds like your staff plays an important role in the process. I, I couldn't do it without my, my, without my staff. Uh, the flow of the patient and the education that the patient receives before they see the doctor, I believe, is a crit critically important uh, element uh, of how we, handle, uh, how we handle the patients and make a, a recommendation. Uh, I, I never talk about what is astigmatism, and I never get the question, Dr. Scoper, what is a cataract? I never get a question about what, are the, uh, what is the difference between a multifocal and a, a toric IOL, and I actually don't get a question about how much it costs. All of those things are already done. The patients are well informed. They're ready for me to make a recommendation. And sometimes the counselors are so, they're, they're so good, they write me little notes and they say, 
This patient loves their glasses. They've been wearing them for 40 years and they want to keep wearing their glasses. They love their glasses. And I see that note and I say, Ms. Jones, I see you love wearing your glasses. We want to make sure you know what your options are, but if you like your glasses, we can continue to do those. Or another patient, Ms. Jones hates her glasses. She would do anything to get out of her reading uh, glasses. And I may say something like, I see that you love your glasses. And they, I said, oh, that's a joke. I know you want to get out of your glasses. Well, let me tell you what the options are. What do you tell patients about the active focus lens to accurately set their expectations? Well, first of all, um, patients, they don't know what they want. What, what I thought years ago with multifocals, it was all about near reading vision. Okay, and, and that's what we focused on counseling patients and talking to patients. And now I know that the patients don't know it, but what they really want first, what they expect is good, clear distance vision. They just expect that, but they don't know to ask for that. So I've learned no matter what, I have to give them good distance vision. So I tell the patient, the first thing I'm gonna give you is good distance vision without your glasses. I'm not even giving you a choice. I'm gonna give that to you. The second thing I'll do with the active focus lens is I'm gonna bring that distance vision into arm's length. So I believe the second most important area for patients to see is that arm's length. And I don't just use the computer as an example. That's so predictable. I say things like, when you're driving, you can see the dashboard. They get that right away. I say, when you're cooking, you can see the kitchen counter, you can see the food on your plate. And then I could say, you see the desktop, you see your computer. That arm's length vision is so important. So I tell the patient, we're gonna bring that good distance vision into arm's length. You can hold your cell phone out to here. Then I tell them, for regular size print, for reading, you're probably gonna have to wear a light pair of reading glasses for, for near, and you have to be ready for that. But I want you to be able to walk out of the house without a pair of reading glasses on a chain around your neck, okay? And if you don't mind wearing a light pair of glasses, you're gonna have some beautiful, a beautiful range of vision. It sounds like it's the best of both worlds, a hybrid monofocal, multifocal design. It, it, truly, it truly is, and, and the design, it's because of the design. It was, that, that center disc is a, simply a monofocal lens focused at distance. All of the other multifocals that center disc is set for intermediate, okay? And so you get your distance vision as splitting light rays, okay, from the uh, apodi steps. A percentage goes to distance, a percentage goes to, uh, goes to near or intermediate. But with the active focus lens, that center disc 100% for distance. And that's why we get such good quality distance vision. What's your approach to implanting the active focus lens? I've gone through a couple of different iterations getting used to the 2.5 active focus and, and learning uh, how to best serve my, my, my patients. Uh, at one point I was only doing bilateral and doing the 3.0 multifocal bilateral. I was mixing and matching. What I've learned and what I've really been doing over the last year is that everybody gets the active focus in their dominant eye they don't get a choice. Like I said, they don't know that they want good distance vision. I know that, I don't give them a choice. So their dominant eye, active focus. I know that I know I'm gonna get good distance vision and I know I'm gonna get good intermediate vision. What I don't know is how close the near vision is gonna be. So if I've got a lady who is five foot one, they're probably not gonna be able to see it near. Their arms aren't long enough. If I've got a guy who's six foot four, his arms are long enough, he's probably gonna be able to read and see his cell phone with both eyes with the active focus. But because I don't know for sure, I do the active focus in the, di in the dominant eye. One week later, I see every patient myself for good refraction, make sure they're 20-20 at distance in their dominant eye, and then I personally measure their intermediate and near vision. And I just bring that near card closer and closer till they find that sweet spot and then I say, okay, it's here or it's here. How would you feel like having both eyes the same? And if they say, wow, if I had both eyes the same, this would be great, then they get the active focus in the non-dominant eye. If they say, you know what, I would like a little bit better near vision, 
they're going to get the restore 3.0 in the non-dominant eye because I know I've got good distance and intermediate. And then I explained to them that we have two different multifocals. One's not better than the other. They're two different models. And I compare it to a Mercedes. I said, okay, so we've got a Mercedes, but you've got two different models of the Mercedes. One's not better than the other. They just do different things. The active focus, distance, intermediate. The 3.0, you get good distance and really good near, but you don't get good intermediate with that. So what we're gonna do is some blended vision. With both eyes open, you're gonna have good distance vision. This right eye is gonna take over at intermediate and the left eye is gonna take over at near. Your brain will get used to it and our goal is for you not to be dependent on glasses for hardly anything at all. Do you have any other clinical pearls about implanting the lens, particularly regarding how forgiving the lens is? With the other models of, the, uh, of, of a multifocal, if they have any ocular surface disease at all, I, I don't use it at all. But I found with the active focus, if they've got a little punctate staining of their cornea inferiorly and a pretty, good, a pretty good looking cornea, not too bad of a dry eye, I'll put the active focus in. Or if they have just a few macular drusen, but I don't think it's affecting the quality of their uh, macular vision, I'll put the active focus uh, in. Uh, I, I think centration is important with during surgery with, with all multifocals. Um, I do think the active focus is a little more forgiving because of that monofocal center as, as well. I, I work very hard at centering the lens, but not every lens is gonna be perfectly centered behind the pupil, but they all have good distance vision, even if that center disc is off, maybe just a little bit. What's been the response of your patients to their vision capabilities after receiving active focus? My patients have gotten what I told them they were going to get. They, they got what they expected, and they're very excited, very excited. Um, many of them are very excited, and many of them are saying, well, I expected to see 2020. I expected to have this intermediate vision, and, uh, and, and they love that range of vision, and it's really been building my practice. I, I think I've heard, I've had more word of mouth referrals after the active focus came out from, from really happy uh, patients. In the past, I've had some really good experience with multifocals for 10 years, uh, but then I've had some average experiences. And, and I don't want any of my patients just to accept what they, what they get. I want them to be excited. So it's renewed my enthusiasm for the, a multifocal with the, uh, act, the active focus has renewed my enthusiasm. And guess what? When my enthusiasm gets renewed, the staff, all my staff's enthusiasm is renewed because the technicians are seeing these happy patients. My counselors are seeing these happy patients. So when the doctor gets excited about good technology, it spreads to the staff. Every patient who walks in the door, they see it, they feel it. They can tell if you believe in a product or not. And we all believe in it. Where do you feel active focus fits in your armamentarium of IOLs? I offer it to every patient who clinically is a good candidate. If their ocular surface looks good, their macula looks good, they've got a, a smaller amount of astigmatism, higher order aberrations, uh, small angle kappa. If all of those things look good, I talk to every one of the patients about it. And my counselors let them know about it. And then when I, when I look in someone's eyes and I can tell that they're interested and that I can see a little spark that wouldn't it be nice not to have to, the freedom of not having to wear the glasses, then I will make a strong recommendation to the patients. I don't want to assume that someone doesn't want the lens uh, uh, from looking at them and profiling them. You know, I, I've been amazed at, at how many people have said, yes, I'll do whatever it takes. I want that lens. I want that quality of life. I want that range of vision. And what would you like to say to other eye surgeons about active focus? So what I would say to other surgeons who have dabbled or in multifocals over the years or used multifocals and maybe have lost their enthusiasm, that the active focus is not just another multifocal. You can truly give your patients the quality of distance vision that you get now with a monofocal lens. So give it a try. It really is a different lens. You'll be really pleased with the quality of distance vision you get. And I think that's why some doctors have, uh, have backed away from the, the multifocals in, in the past. 
So this is an opportunity for all of these uh, doubters to get back involved with the uh, active focus. It'll make a difference in your patients and make a difference in your practice. Is there anything else on the horizon that you're excited about right now? Yes, there's something very exciting, and that is the TORIC platform on the Active Focus and the Restore 3.0 multifocal. Uh, I, I was involved in the, uh, the, the, the Restore TORIC clinical trial years ago, and I only had 20 patients and implanted about 40 eyes. These were anecdotally very happy uh, patients. What I learned from that clinical trial was the importance of correcting astigmatism, all of the astigmatism in these multifocal uh, patients. And there's no better way to correct uh, astigmatism than with a toric platform. LRIs from a fifth second laser are great, but when you get into over a diopter or so, the quality of their vision is gonna be better with a toric lens. I love toric lenses. 15 to 20% of everything I do is a toric uh, lens. So I am so excited about this toric platform finally on the Restore 3.0, and just a few months later, it's gonna be on the Restore uh, Active Focus 2.5. Uh, um, I've got so many patients that I'm waiting to recommend the Active Focus with the Toric uh, platform. It's gonna change everything. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Scooper. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.